Hello everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 91, we will conclude kind of the roadmap for becoming a software architect in part six here. Um, in the prior lessons, starting with lesson 86, where I introduced this roadmap, we started going through all of these portions. Um, uh, the last lesson, we took a look at starting to focus on trade-off analysis and kind of the techniques for how to find the trade-offs in various uh, aspects of architecture. Um, in this lesson, which will be the last one in the roadmap, we'll take a look at developing good soft skills. So when we talk about developing good soft skills, uh, this is an essential skill as a software architect for many reasons, for facilitation, for negotiation, and also leading teams. As a matter of fact, um, in my book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture that I wrote with Neil Ford, which was published uh, last February uh, 2020, um, we actually devote one third of this book to the techniques and soft skills of architecture. As a matter of fact, within there, uh, we talk specifically and devote chapters to uh, the tough parts about making architecture decisions, analyzing architectural risk, which is a great way of being able to bring developers uh, into uh, the realm of architecture. Uh, also diagramming and presenting, which is a necessary skill uh, to present our ideas and to be able to effectively diagram uh, those type of architectures, uh, making teams effective in various techniques, and finally negotiation and leadership skills. Uh, so what I want to start with is really the first piece, which is facilitation and leadership, um, really becoming that go-to person on the team. Uh, when we start to talk about becoming that go-to person, this is the journey to becoming a software architect is really start developing those core facilitation skills, those presentation skills. Um, we talked in a prior lesson, as a matter of fact, it was the last lesson, number 90, about trade-off analysis and the fact that once we find a trade-off, uh, we tend to ask the question, which is more important, performance or security? And there's a balance between those. And unfortunately, as an architect, we usually cannot make that decision. It's usually made by a business stakeholder, for example, like a product owner or a business analyst, somebody who owns the application. And so when we come up with these kind of illities or trade-offs or have to uh, negotiate, um, part of that is facilitating uh, these kind of stakeholder meetings to be able to have them understand aspects of the architecture, but also to be able to make an intelligent choice by objectifying those. Um, the, the other thing to start becoming the go-to person, and this is uh, advice I usually give in the journey to becoming a software architect, is take the initiative. Uh, do a brown bag lunch. There's so many of these lessons, uh, different classes you may have taken, uh, just something that you know. Um, start doing uh, brown bag lunches. Now, I know at the time of this recording, most of us aren't in person at work still, but that doesn't mean you cannot do a noontime Zoom brown bag lunch. But this is a place where you can actually start uh, exercising your skills, not only as the go-to person, uh, but also that mentoring and coaching. Uh, good examples. Uh, for example, just take a 30-minute brown bag lunch. Everybody grabs a lunch, signs into Zoom, or if it's in person, uh, eventually <laughs> uh, goes to the conference room. And just do a review of design patterns, you know, show some implementations of the flyweight or uh, the strategy pattern or the observer pattern, uh, just as a refresher to everybody. Simple things like that or just maybe some new features of Java 200 or something like this. I'm just joking right now. I think it's 15. But anyways, and then also in kind of this journey of becoming a go-to person to help develop those core leadership skills is really just starting to take the initiative regardless of your role. Uh, to really become that mentor on the team, not only from a technical standpoint, but also just from maybe a support for personal issues as well. Just that really helps just become that, that go-to person on the team. Uh, you know, the next uh, aspect in developing these soft skills in this journey to becoming a software architect is also um, making yourself known to business stakeholders, which leads to start developing core negotiation skills. 
you might think, well, why is negotiation so important in architecture? It is probably one of the most important skills an architect can actually have and try to develop. Uh, negotiation is necessary in architecture for this reason. Let's say, um, let's say Sarah is one of our best developers on the team and she's writing her code and Sarah realizes that she's got a lot of cyclomatic complexity in her code. So she immediately stops and says, hmm, this isn't good. And so she immediately starts rewriting her code to the strategy pattern. Or you've got a developer who breaks apart one class into two because it was simply getting too big or maybe combines uh, two methods together. Does anybody really care that Sarah's doing all those things? No, of course not. As a matter of fact, if anything, we might actually say, hey, Sarah, can I see your code for that strategy pattern? <laughs> I'd like to see how you implement that. Um, no, of course not. Um, however, as an architect, Let's say that you make the decision to create what are called application silos. And this is where applications or the database can only be accessed by the application that owns it um, to be able to kind of restrict control, gain access to change control and security and throughput. Yet all other systems are accessing that database. When you make that architecture decision, do you think you'll be challenged? And the answer is yes. As a matter of fact, here's the secret, everybody. In this journey to becoming a software architect, enjoy being a developer as much as you can because you have almost total control over decisions you make. However, as an architect, this is why negotiation is so critical because almost every decision you make as an architect will be challenged. It will be challenged by other architects who have a better idea, they think. It will be challenged by developers who really don't want to listen to you and just do their own thing and they think they have a better idea. It will be challenged by stakeholders who don't want to pay for this architectural change or pay for the time it's going to take. That's why key negotiation skills are absolutely necessary to get any given decision through. And so developing soft skills, everybody, is hard. As a matter of fact, my last piece of advice I can give you is really to start doing it. And because you will likely, like me, make a lot of mistakes. And I think most of my key soft skills that I have today were earned and gained only because of actually trying these things out, making mistakes, learning from those mistakes, trying to repair maybe those relationships, and move on. And that's about the best advice I can give you on really learning those soft skills. As a matter of fact, um, in our book, like I said, um, here's the link to it, um, we devote a third, the last third of the book, to these techniques and soft skills about architecture. It's not all just knowing the technical aspects. As a matter of fact, I have two classes that are really targeted exactly towards this. The first is architecture soft skills. This is a workshop that I do that's about three to four hours long uh, that focuses entirely hands-on on these exact soft skills of facilitation, negotiation, leadership, how to make teams effective. So I would encourage you to look at the agenda there and also the Software Architecture Fundamentals class where we really kind of do a talk about a lot of these soft skills and especially the techniques. All right, and again, another place where you can actually um, join these discussions is a Fr Foundations Friday Forum. This is a free architecture Q&A forum that Neil Ford and I have put together uh, that's held on the last Friday of every month at 9.30 Eastern time for 30 minutes uh, where we talk about some aspect of software architecture. And as a matter of fact, um, probably in the coming months, maybe we'll open it up to soft skills which is a great discussion piece about the importance and how do you obtain those. And so make sure you stay tuned to Friday Foundation Forum, just free to register and uh, join us and listen to questions or pose some of your own. So everyone, this has been uh, the final lesson in this journey to becoming a software architect, number 91. Um, starting with 92, um, I will be going with my normal two week cadence. And so July 6th will be the next posting for Lesson 92. So 
please be sure and stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this six-part series, this weekly series on becoming a software architect and kind of the journey and the pathway and resources to get more information. It's a hard journey, everyone, and it is, it is not a clear journey. So hopefully this gives you some just some help and guidance in terms of charting your career path as a software architect. Um, good luck in your journey, and I hope to um, I hope I hope you pay um, uh, listen to more uh, software architecture Monday. Thanks everyone. Bye bye and stay safe.